Welcome back to a new Teams in 20 session. So today we're going to be covering um, Microsoft Whiteboard. We're going to look a little bit at the feature review of the application and the resources. Um, I know I'm aware I've been missing for quite a while. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Daria. I am a model work cloud solution, cloud solution architect at Microsoft. I have been working with Joe on the Teams in 20 series for, uh, for a while now. And again, I'm very happy to be running this session for you today. So without further ado, I'm going to kick off with um, with the what is Microsoft Whiteboard. If we're looking at a definition, something really fast is a digital canvas at the end of the day. Um, I was planning on uh, creating a picture, an AI picture with Copilot with a digital canvas, but I still need to work on my skills to do that. That canvas allows us to brainstorm, to collaborate, and to create with others. So these three words are keywords when we're speaking about Whiteboard. Brainstorm, collaborate, and create. We can obviously draw, we can write, we can erase, we can add images as well. We can use stickers if we want to. We can use templates um, or notes on a specific shared board where we have our team contributing. When we speak about the instances where we can use whiteboard and where we want to use whiteboard, that's definitely in Teams. That's the most accessible and that's how probably most of us did uh, using it in Teams or during a Teams call with our uh, with our team. It's going to be on a Surface Hub as well on a device, so it's really up to your preference. And the idea behind is designed for flexible work, right? It's designed for flexible learning. It's allowing you to kickstart, to accelerate your ideation process. And it does that in a visualizing way. So for visual learners, it's a very good way to put all the ideas together when you're brainstorming on a project or on, on an event, perhaps, and categorize as well and also summarize your thoughts. And the best part of it, the last part of categorizing and summarizing, that is done by Copilot. And that's an amazing integration, right? We have our best buddy Copilot in there as well. The only parenthesis that I wanna make in here is obviously you need to be licensed for Copilot in order to be able to use those features. But today's during today's demo, I'll be showing you a, a few things about Copilot in, uh, in Whiteboard as, as well as an extra. Moving on to some features and some benefits, right? So these are just a few of them, uh, but I would start first of all with the real-time collaboration. All meeting participants can engage during that specific meeting and put their ideas together, or also after the meeting, if sometimes it's hard for us to brainstorm together in a virtual meeting, which tends to happen sometimes. Whiteboards can also be shared within a channel. They can be shared in Teams, um, allowing all the members to view and edit that specific share board, a, share, a shared whiteboard. You have access to the past whiteboards as well. So when I'm going to switch to my live demo, you will see a history of whiteboards in there and what I've created so far. So you can access them and you have the permission to view through the whiteboard app or also by reopening the meeting invite and selecting the whiteboard tab. As mentioned before, it's integrated with Teams, the application that most of us are using the most every day. So it's integrated into Teams meetings, into Teams channels, into Teams chats, and it's making it really easy to collaborate. It's an infinite canvas. So it means that you can design and you can accommodate an entire and an endless stream of ideas, right? You'll see in a second what I mean. And it's allowing you to write, to draw again, to add content without running out of space. You never run out of space. It also provides supports for various input methods, right? So it supports pen, it supports touch, it supports keyboard as well, and the mouse inputs. And the best part of it all is obviously nowadays we, and I'm really curious if I'm the only one, I hope I'm not, but uh, starting from scratch, from a blank screen, sometimes it freezes me, so I don't really have ideas. I feel like I'm losing my creativity, I'm losing my inspiration in that instance, even though the ideas are in my mind, it's just hard for me to access them. So Compared to all of the applications that you have in M365, whether that's Word or PowerPoint um, or OneNote, in Whiteboard, you also have templates, right? So you don't have to start from scratch. You can choose one of them and obviously edit it further and personalize it to your preference or to the team's preference, but it doesn't mean that you have to create it it's yourself. And the last slide that I'm gonna show you before we switch to the fun part, this is the Copilot in Whiteboard, right? So the Points that I've included into the slide, these are the ways in which you can use Copilot in Whiteboard. It really seems magical. It seems to address the obvious things that you'd have always wanted to do on a, on a specific whiteboard, put things together, have ideas right in there. 
categorize those ideas and then summarize that into a loop component and be able to share those with your team into a chat, for example, right? So it generates tons of ideas, it organizes them as you'd like, and then you're moving toward in it, you're moving that word in other places. The idea is not to keep you stuck to something, but to be able to allow you to use more of the ecosystem of M365 and whiteboard as well. I've also included a slide with some resources. Um, what's coming up in the whiteboard, um, pretty much an introduction to how to use it. And uh, this will be included into the um, into the recording as well. I am in Teams, I'm in my Teams application and I'm using my whiteboard one. So as you can see what I've done here, there were a lot of tests that I've ran uh, with whiteboard and also for co-pilot uh, demo, dem demonstrations because I'm, a, I'm an M365 co-pilot architect at Microsoft. And you can see you can use it for many, many, many things. I also used it for, um, for a celebration for one of our managers at Microsoft who's been here for quite a while and uh, we just added pictures and uh, wishes to him on this whiteboard and shared it with them after. So that's the history I was talking about. I will click on new whiteboard. Again, this is the app, so I'm not using it in the context of a meeting, but you can definitely do that when you when you start that meeting and you have def some commands in here, right? When I'm telling you that this is an infinite canvas, it is. If I click on the little hand and I scroll it never ends, right? And I can add content, simply draw the content back and you'll not be seeing it, it, it anymore. And you can start adding something that is not necessarily related to what you've done before. At the same time, you have the pen, again, the inking. So if it's easier for you to use the inking, you can definitely do that. I'm gonna say, hi, and I'm gonna draw a smiley face. I'm not very good at inking, as you can see. And you can change also the color of your pen and the thickness and the size. Next thing that we can do, obviously, if you ever want to delete this, you can delete this by just clicking on here and clicking on the bin, and it's going to erase everything that you have added or designed or drawn um, using the ink button. Obviously, you can add notes on your grid. For example, I want to add this note in here, and I can start typing what I want to add. Prepare for an early in career event. Right. This is something that we want to create as a team. And I've added this note. I can minimize it if I want to and just arrange it as I'd like. I can change the color of different notes. Obviously, if we have different priorities, we can change the priorities. And here I can say um, focus on the admin part. This, for example, can be tasks that I'm working on, right? I have to prioritize these and I'm creating this whiteboard for myself to see exactly what I have to do. And according to my tasks, I'm changing the color so that I can differentiate them. Prepare for my demos. And now what I can do, obviously, when you co collaborate with other people in real time right now, if you would have access to this, you can thumbs me up, you can put a heart next to what I've written here, and I will see that you've added a heart or any other emoji that you see down here as well. And I'll know if you like my idea, if you don't like my idea, if it's something that is working out, you can put a sad face and I'll, and I'll know that you're not really a fan of my idea. And if you want to remove it, again, it's as easy as with a click. We can keep on adding comments in here. So for example, if I'm sharing this with my manager, let's say, or with my mentor, they can add a comment in here and say, this is actually a priority for next year. And now I'll know. So obviously this is done when we collaborate. Uh, this is the idea of collaboration on, um, on, on Whiteboard. And if you're creating this and people are commenting to your idea, you'll be able to click on their profile picture in here and see exactly what they said and also reply to the comment if it's needed. You can edit the comment whenever you add it or delete the thread if you believe that that comment is not necessary anymore. You have the text as well. So I can add in here, I'm sorry about that. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Daria's priorities. And again, I can collaborate with my manager and my mentor on a call on my priorities for the upcoming financial year. Let's just say it's a fictitious example. The funny thing, also you can add shapes. So it doesn't have to be a square in here. It can to be it can be a round circle. So it really, really depends on your preference. You can make it as visual as you'd like it to be. Whether you want it to keep it in a simple way or you want it to be a bit more creative, let's say, with what you add in here, it's completely up to you. And I can keep on adding here priorities. Learn 
for a new certification. I can change the size as well of this writing if I want to. I can change the font if it's needed. And if I click on the more options, this is where the fun part starts. So as I've told you, I've added these priorities here, but if I just click on the hand, I can put them on the right hand corner and now I don't see them and I can always go back. But I'm going to go and try something new. As I've told you, you don't have to start from scratch again, right? Because you have the templates. You can add images as well. You can add documents, links, videos, and loop components. But for the sake of today's demos, I wanted to click on the template one. And as you can see, you have many, many templates to choose from. You have some recommended one, my templates, um, just in case you're saving one of them. And based on what you're using whiteboard for, it can be brainstorming, give you problem solving, design and research strategy, project planning, retrospective games, workshops, and learning. Based on these sections that you have, you can click on them and you can see different ideas that you can use. The good thing is you can preview this before you actually use it. So you don't have to click on use it and then delete it. Again, if I move into problem solving, you can see it's gonna be a little bit different. Strategy as well, project planning as well, learning if you look at it. So I will be fully honest with you, since I have the templates available to me, I normally use the templates that are recommended and I try them out and see how they work out. And I think it's a very, very good start if I believe, if, if I'm looking at that. But I'm gonna say, I wanna preview this one. So this is what it looks like. It creates literally a template of notes that I can just populate with content once I have there instead of clicking on the actual node and adding it into the whiteboard that I'm working on. So I'm just going to say use this template. And I'm going to add it here. And now I can start typing, right? I can add content in here. I can say again, um, I'm going to use the text that he has priorities. And now I can start, right? Prepare for teams in. Let me get closer. Good. Prepare for teams in 20. Prepare for M365 Copilot demo. Finish my trainings. Schedule syncs with my team. And so on. Again, this is an example of me not collaborating with anyone, but try it out with your team, try it out with your colleagues, and you'll see how fun this is to build and how much you can play with all the with all the um, the, the features that you have here. We have four minutes left, so what I'm going to do is also scroll down a little bit in here and use Copilot. So if I click on the Copilot icon, again, you have to be obviously um, licensed to use that, but it can suggest ideas for you when you don't really know where to start. So I'll click on suggest and I say, suggest ways to organize a great early in career event. I'm an early in career architect at Microsoft and I am have a task of creating a great early in career event for my Go for it. That means I need to come up with ideas, right? And sometimes this is easy, but sometimes it's difficult. So I'm just going to ask Copilot to do that for me. And now, as you can see, I have some, some suggestions in here. I can offer interactive workshops. I can provide networking opportunities. I can inc include guest speakers, which is what I would normally do, plan team building activities, offer career development session. And if there's any idea that I don't really like, I can always click on the X button and just delete that specific suggestion. If in any point this is not working out and the suggestions that you receive by Copilot are not correct, we encourage you to use the thumbs down, thumbs up, thumbs down to like the content or dislike the content um, and, and let us know how accurate it is. And I can clip, click on insert or I can actually click on generate more and see what Copilot can bring me if I click on that. I have facilitate icebreaker activities, mentorship opportunities, provide relevant resources, so more ideas to, to count in here. So I'm just going to click on insert. And now I have created a specific template including these ideas, right? 
If I click on my Copilot, what I can do is categorize. And if I click on categorize, it's going to create additional categories and different colors, of course, color codes for those categories. And as you can see, my template has completely changed, right? So based on the recommendations that Copilot has provided me, it has split those recommendations into workshops, networking, speakers, and activities. So now it's an easier way for me to see what the event looks like. Starting from scratch, I had no idea whatsoever, and now I know what it looks like for me, at least in, in a better way. And again, you're not forced to keep it. If it doesn't like, if you don't like it, you can always revert to what it used to be before you categorized. You can regenerate if that's what you want, or you can keep it and keep editing and modifying as you go. And the last thing that I wanted to show you, because we're at time, is the summarize bit. So after we go through, through suggest, Obviously, you can visualize them as images as well if you're visual learners. Um, but for the purpose of today, I'll, just, I'll keep to summarize. After we've been through these two points, let me keep it actually before we move on. I can click on summarize content. And it has taken me a little bit far because it has to create a large visual space. This is going to be a loop component, and that's why it's not next to, um, to that plan. But if by any chance my team cannot attend the meeting that I am um, I'm using Whiteboard for, by the way, when you're in a meeting and you are creating a Whiteboard, you can click on Follow Me and everyone is going to see exactly what you do and will be focusing on you leading the Whiteboard. But now I have a summary, right? I know the participant is myself. I know the date. I know I have 18 ideas generated. It takes into consideration everything in here, right? All of them, not just what I've done uh, into this bit, into this area. And it's telling me, that I have some preparation, I've outlined some tasks to prepare, engagement, development opportunities, and networking and team building. And the funny thing is here, you can literally copy and paste this component and go to a Teams chat and share this with someone else outside of this whiteboard and continue the flow of your work using a different application based on your preference. Thank you so much for attending. Um, I really hope you found it useful and I will see you next week. Uh -oh.